G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so the market was going up for a little while, so over the 24 hours, and now we can start to see it's tapered off a little bit. Uh, things are getting very interesting in the market, uh, in my opinion, and the longer this kind of goes on, the more I think we're probably going to see some downside. I don't think there's going to be massive downside, but I definitely think it's possible that we see some, and we'll get into uh, my reasoning for that very shortly. But we can see this is 576 billion. This was 577 billion, not that long ago at all. And we can see in the last hour it's turned around. But look, you know, this could change equally as fast as it goes up. Uh, ETH gas prices coming up again, so 53. Uh, that's not great, but, you know, hopefully that turns around. Bitcoin dominance growing ever so slightly. So that makes me think that. You know, maybe people are putting uh, some of their profits from their altcoins into Bitcoin at the moment. So, look, Bitcoin could go up. And I know that's a, a bit of an oxymoron considering I was saying I think it's going to go down. Look, I just think it is likely that it's going to come down again. We keep bumping off this level and coming down. So in the short term, I think we're coming down. But long term, obviously, I think Bitcoin's going up. And I have a very interesting story about that. But let's have a look. All right, there we go. So over the last seven days, a lot of things have really come down. They've lost uh, you know, quite substantial gains, but we went on a big run where things really pumped. Again, XRP was at you know, sort of 20 something cents not that long ago, and it got up to 92 cents. So now it's you know, coming back down to about you know, roughly half of those gains that it's made. So that's to be expected. Now we'll have to wait and see whether it holds uh, or goes lower or maybe even goes higher Again regulation is supposed to be coming very soon uh, and that'll be great for XRP if they get the regulation that they want uh, If they get the regulation that's opposite to what they want <laughs> Obviously that may not be so great for them But Brad Garlinghouse has said that he thinks XRP will do do fine if they're declared a security So again, we'll have to wait and see uh, Yeah just nothing sort of too crazy here. Let's have a look though. What were, if there are any, big gains? All right, Sushi Swap. Just on a roll, and again, you know, being uh, bought up by Yearn Finance, so it seems to be doing quite well. Elrond has been doing quite well. Synthetics Network, which is great. Uh, I was holding for lower prices, uh, and I've missed out on a good opportunity. But you know, that's the way it goes. I've got the cash sitting on the side. Uh, for should we actually see a dip and things come down. BAM protocols done pretty well, but again, now we're looking at the seven days. So 24 hours has been good, but they're down over the last seven days. But nothing too sort of crazy. I mean, we got, you know, four here that are in the double digits, which is always good. And everything else is sort of single digits, uh, which is, don't get me wrong, in any normal kind of traditional market, a single digit move over a year, you know, not 1%, but you know, five, six, seven percent over a year is considered amazing. And these are doing them in a matter of 24 hours. But with those, you know, massive gains comes the massive losses. That is the industry uh, that we're in at the moment. All right, what about losses? Has there any been, has there been any heavy losses in the top 100? No, not too bad. Block stack, look, this will probably come down a little bit more. It's had a great couple of days. So I uh, expect it to come down a little bit lower, but I'm really happy with Blockstack. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye out on how much this comes down and I'll probably buy uh, some more Blockstack with the retracement that comes. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. I'll be checking the charts and you know, doing my technical analysis, which is not the traditional TA of just simply the charts, but just reading around, finding out what information I can find about Blockstack. Uh, and you know, it's, you know, at least my thoughts on how much this is going to retrace, uh, whether I buy in again or not. I probably will though, that's what I'm leaning towards. All right, Avalanche, uh, Energy Web Token, Ampleforth, Celsius Network, so there we go. Haven't seen Celsius Network go backwards for a while, but uh, it currently is. Uh, Paxo Standard uh, and XRP. Again, we'll have to wait and see. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see XRP come back down to sort of 45 cents, maybe even 40 cents. I'm really hoping that we don't see XRP come back down to uh, the 30 cent range. That'll be quite disappointing. And look, I don't think it's going to do that, uh, you know, 
in my personal opinion, but it's not to say it can't. I just I would see more maybe 40 to 45 cents uh, is where I see it sort of coming down to and sort of bottoming out. But look, if Bitcoin has a big fall and, you know, was to come back to that $14,000 range, then yeah, XRP could probably easily fall back into the 30 cent range. We're all just kind of waiting to see exactly what Bitcoin's going to do. All right, a couple of interesting stories that I found before we get onto the charts and that. So, P2P Bitcoin Exchange packs full to enforce mandatory ID verification uh, in most Asian countries and it partners with Digital Bank. Look, this was always coming for, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum and XRP and, you know, all crypto assets to go mainstream. KYC is how it's going to work. We're not going to have an industry where, you know, random people are... Uh, you know, no name, no face people can come and do malicious things uh, on the network. So, you know, disappointing for some, I suppose, that, you know, it has to be all this KYC. But look, for the for the really big prices for cryptocurrencies to get to, this is what's needed. If we want it to go mainstream, we need people to be identifiable. We need to be able to, you know, know who they are so we can find the bad players and, you know, prosecute them and all the rest of it. But for the average Joe who's not doing anything illegal, what does it matter, you know, what people, uh, if people know what you're buying and all the rest of it? They kind of know that anyway. You get a bank statement, so the bank's got all of those records. And almost no one uses cash uh, anymore, at least, you know, here in Australia, cash is not big. Don't get me wrong, the older generation is still using it. But, uh, yeah, most people are just doing pay wave, you know, tap and go and all the rest of it. So, you know paying for cash and being you know anonymous uh, it's just nil null and void for most people here in australia uh, now don't get me wrong it's not that uh, way all over the world but a lot of the you know the more developed nations are definitely uh, in that similar kind of boat and even the developing nations they're leaning towards it now they're getting less and less uh, cash and doing everything on their phone and all the rest of it so this is what it takes. This is the downside to you know the mass adoption and the huge price appreciation. Uh, is you're going to lose a little bit of you know anonymity uh, and privacy. I guess is one way you could put it. All right. Something I found very interesting here. So Bitcoin balances on exchanges they've fallen to levels not seen since 2018. So that was right at the end of the sort of bull run. I'm going to say is probably when it. Uh, no, not yeah. No, because they were selling then. So this would have been probably the bear market, I'm going to say. Bitcoin balances on exchanges have fallen to levels not observed in two years, according to data from Arcane Research. The, f the firm reports that the amount of Bitcoin being taken off exchanges has declined sharply and is one of the main stories of the year. So people are buying Bitcoin and taking them off exchanges because they want to hold. And then when the, all the Bitcoins start to come back to exchanges, it's probably an indication that people are now going to sell. All right. At the same time, some investors who have held Bitcoin for a long time are now starting to sell those Bitcoins, locking in profits as the price hovers around record highs. So yeah, someone who bought Bitcoin at, you know, let's say a couple of hundred dollars, maybe even only a couple of thousand dollars, and they probably have lots of Bitcoin or they just want uh, some liquidity to, you know, get into something else. They're starting to sell some Bitcoin. So that is why we're seeing Bitcoin just hovering around this, uh, you know, kind of 17000 to $19,000 range. And it just can't break out of there at the moment. There's people definitely buying, but there's people definitely selling. And particularly miners, they're always selling. They generally have to constantly sell to stay in profit. As the price gets higher and higher and higher, they can afford to sell less and less and less. But while the prices are still sort of somewhat relatively low, then they have to sell a lot to stay uh, liquid and stay, stay afloat. All right, according to Arcane Research, the amount of Bitcoin held on exchanges is down 21% since February this year. On-chain st statistics from Glassnode indicate that the amount of Bitcoin held on exchanges is down to levels not seen since 2018. Between January 2018 and February 2020, the total of amount of Bitcoin held on exchanges increased because people were looking to sort of start to sell. However, the trend reversal uh, course starting in February. So February this year, people are buying it. It's the new bull market. They're going to hold until next year and then begin to sell. That's generally the way it works. That's the trend. That's the way it's followed. 
uh, since its creation. So interesting. All right. So Clean Spark, new Bitcoin mining revenue could send shares higher, say as analysts. Uh, and that goes to, uh, without saying, I think any company, publicly traded company, uh, who's a Bitcoin mining company, uh, their stocks will go up if they're investing uh, in cryptocurrencies, just like MicroStrategy did. Uh, and it'll be the same, you know, Grayscale and you know, whatever other company starts to do the same. So particularly mining companies. So CleanSpark, or CLSK, is the latest company to jump on the bandwagon. Last week, the microgrid software player announced it is buying Bitcoin miner AL ATLD data centers. The purchase will cost CleanSpark $19.4 million in an all-stock deal and will mean CleanSpark will get its hands on ATL's 3471 mining rigs. So I have no, no doubt that their, uh, you know, uh, price share is going to go up. That's just the way it is at the moment. Anything that's related to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies uh, is just, you know, it's, it's big business at the moment. So yeah, of course they will start to go up. And as the price of Bitcoin starts to go up, they will make more and more. But it's about whether they plan strategically well to make themselves through the next bear market. Because there will be a bear market where uh, the price of mining will basically stay the same. But Bitcoin the, itself will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. How much cheaper and whether, whether it has the you know, kind of 70 to 85% retracement that it's had uh, in previous cycles, uh, you know, time will tell. Who knows? But yes, I do expect their uh, you know, share price to go up. That's just the way it is. All right, here we go. So PayPal stock hits new all-time high as e-commerce Bitcoin trading rally continues. Hence why I expect their price to go up and Square Cash App and you know anyone who's got anything to do with Bitcoin, uh, you know if they're holding it, custodying it, selling it, whatever, there's going to be you know big, big volumes of people starting to look to buy this stuff and get people to hold it for them and custody it and all the rest of it. Uh, this is what happens in the bull run. Uh, and again, all these companies will have to make sure they understand the cycles. And prepare themselves for the downside when it starts to go the other way. So does not uh, surprise me whatsoever. I think they said it's up 17% though for the year or something like that. So that's what I mean. We go over here and it's up 17%. Well, we've got things that'll do that, you know, in seven days. They'll go up 17% uh, and PayPal stock has gone up 17% uh, this year. So yeah, you decide which one's best for you. <laughs> All right. Unknown crypto whale transfers 620 million Bitcoin in a single transaction. Uh, that's pretty remarkable. Uh, they obviously know the system well and know how to move it around. Most people send a little bit first to make sure they got it right, and you know then send the rest uh, in a couple of different transactions. But they would have just they were happy to do it all in one go. So I suppose if you got that kind of money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you probably know a thing or two uh, if you're buying that much Bitcoin. But let's have a look. Whale Alert, a cryptocurrency tracking and analytics company, reported a significant Bitcoin transaction on Sunday. This is just the other day, where an unnamed wallet transferred 32,353 Bitcoin worth approximately 620 million to another unknown wallet. According to the details shared by the blockchain tracker, the transaction executed on 13th of December is one of the biggest transfers in recent days. The user only paid around $12 in the transaction fee. $12 to send 622 million. Sounds pretty good. The recent move came after the price of Bitcoin jumped from 17,600 to 19,200 over the weekend. Finance Magnates earlier reported a similar move where an anonymous crypto user moved around 1 million uh, in BTC from Silk Road Darknet wallet. Ooh, look out. The transaction reported by Whale Alert signals a volatile week ahead for the crypto market as Bitcoin has been hovering between 17,000 and 19,000. So again, we don't know where these are going. They could be going to uh, an exchange or, uh, you know, some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some mixer wallet or something like that. Who knows? I mean, generally, uh, you know, Whale Alert have an indication of where they're going and they're probably not going to an exchange. But who knows? It, it could be. Uh, and that will sort of scare people into thinking, oh my God, someone's going to dump it. And then all of a sudden, uh, the price can really uh, reflect that and go a whole lot lower. And for me, 
uh, I'm buying. I don't care what happens. If it goes up, I'm buying. If it goes down, I'm buying. I'm generally waiting for it to go down. I don't like to buy on green days. I wait for the days to be red before I buy. Uh, and again, if we've had a number of green days in a row, uh, then I'm usually just going to wait yeah, until we get a, a good red day. I won't just decide to uh, FOMO in. If I miss some gains, I miss some gains. You know, to get smart in this, uh, you know, the whole investing sort of space is you need to go against what every, not, I'll be careful when I say that, not completely go against what everyone else is doing, but you can't be doing exactly the same as what everyone else is doing. If you want average returns, do what the average person is doing. If you want returns that are better than the average, then you've got to do something different to what the average person is doing. And number one, that starts by buying when it's red. When the market's going down, as long as you understand what part of the cycle it's in, if it's in the bear cycle, you can just leave it alone. If it's in the bull cycle, then buy the dips. Look, it doesn't mean it can't go down a little bit lower, but it's most likely going to go higher. Now, that's just my personal opinion, not financial advice. You need to do your own research. But for me, I don't like to buy when it's green. I like to buy when it's red doesn't mean I don't ever buy when it's green. If there's something on the charts that's telling me, no, this is just getting started, I absolutely uh, will. Uh, but you know that doesn't always work. So for me, I prefer generally to buy when it's red. That way I know I'm getting it at a discount and I haven't missed the pump. Uh, the pump is still yet to come. All right, Bitcoin faces a $600 billion catalyst, uh, JP Morgan strategist says. So I found something else here. Mass Mutual, and we talked about this the other day, so they're an insurance company, their accumulation of Bitcoin is much more significant than a 100 million institutional buy order. It sets a precedent across the insurance and pension fund sector that BTC is a legitimate store of value. There is a lot of money tied up in pension funds and insurance. A lot of money. Now that uh, Mass Mutual has decided to buy some, it's like that whole first mover. No one wants to be the first. We're all scared to be the first one. You know, oh God, if it fails, I'll look stupid and I'll have lost everything. But once one person does it, we get a little bit more confident. And especially if it's sort of worked for them, that they've bought it uh, and it hasn't dumped and, you know, it's still going up. Then you're like, all right, no, nah, I'm going to get on this after, you know, either the first person or the second or the third. And once you see a lot of people doing it, again, it's that whole FOMO thing. Suddenly everyone starts to do it. So now that these in... Insurance companies and pension funds have seen, you know, Mass Mutual and again, how well all these other institutional players have done. They're going to start to do the same. How much they're going to allocate towards Bitcoin, we don't know. But this is still the start. We haven't seen the real crazy FOMO yet. Uh, it could get really, really uh, wild. And I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uniswap. So Uniswap tops 580 billion in lifetime volume. But where is it coming from? So uh, there's been some skepticism uh, around Uniswap and how it's got to this uh, number. I mean, look, don't get me wrong, it probably has done this number, uh, but this is very interesting. Some from the crypto community have expressed skepticism regarding the source of much of Uniswap's volume, with the platform featuring no KYC and no vetting uh, processes for listed tokens. Twitter user CyberHokey in, uh, in, insinuated that much of the platform's volume came from darknet markets, money laundering and wash trading, although Uniswap's fixed fee schedule would make wash trading cost prohibitive. The platform has been a destination for ill-gotten funds. In September, the hacker who stole $200 million from crypto of crypto from Hong Kong-based exchange KuCoin sent $1.2 million worth of SNX to Uniswap for laundering, intensifying concerns regarding the potential for criminal actors uh, to abuse the platform. Twitter user uh, Queen CryptoCat speculated that half of Uniswap's volume may have been generated by tokens that ultimately comprise, comprise little more uh, than rug pulls. So that's what we need to be uh, mindful of. Uh, I, I like Uniswap. Uh, I haven't really used it. Uh, I have looked, looked at it. Uh, and I don't mind it, but I totally agree with what they're saying there, uh, is there's no KYC, it's completely unregulated, you don't know what you're investing in, uh, and there were a number of rug pull scams uh, that went through there. And look, 
a lot of uh, you know tokens that were stolen again from other people and uh, exchanges and things like that hacks and that a, a lot of it did find its way into Uniswap so you know that's the whole thing with you know complete decentralization and anonymity and all the rest of it we don't know who's doing what uh, and so you know it's it's good for the people who don't want people to know what they're doing but it's bad for everyone else because then if you get scammed you don't know who you can go and see uh, about you know being uh, you know compensated for that or going to law enforcement and saying this person or that organization they took this from me uh, and having them charged if it's complete am anonymity then you've just been scammed uh, and that is a concern all right this this story i found really really interesting so shock survey suggests most investors think bitcoin won't top 50k by the year 2030 so that's a decade away a survey from Genesis Mining has found that most Bitcoin investors aren't expecting a $50,000 BTC price in 2030. Although 3.5% of respondents tipped uh, prices exceeding half a million. So, you know, most people who've been uh, around for a while don't think it's going to get to 50000 That is uh, concerning, I guess, uh, if, if you're new to the space, but we'll go on. British Virgin Islands-based institutional mining platform Genesis Mining has published the findings from a survey of a thousand current and former US-based Bitcoin investors, two-thirds of whom believe BTC is a better long-term uh, store of value than the dollar. More than half of the respondents believe Bitcoin will beat out gold, real estate and the stock market over the five to ten years, with 65 expressing faith that BT's value will continue to appreciate with time. That just seems weird that, you know, they're saying that, but then they think the value of Bitcoin would go down. Very confusing. But despite the apparently favorable sentiment, just 17% of those surveyed predicted that Bitcoin's price would exceed 50000 by 2030. This would only require the price to increase by 160% over the next 10 years, while Bitcoin has already gained 166% this year so far. A further 17% predicted that Bitcoin's price would actually fall over the next decade, with one-sixth of respondents did not feel confident in speculating on BTC's long-term price performance. In total, 50.1% uh, of respondents estimated that BTC will be worth $20,000 or less by 2030. One-third predicted the price will be $10,000 or less, and 11.8% forecasted prices of below $1,000. Uh, look, that is definitely concerning, but I just don't see it happening. With mass adoption and everything that's going on, there's no way the Bitcoin price could go down that low if it's just being used more and bought more and there's more demand for it. But look, anything's possible. Uh, and I'm going to say some of these people, the thousand people, look, they have been uh, in this industry for a long time and they are, you know, kind of so-called experts. But also, they may be saying that to create a bit of FUD so they, they can, uh, you know, collect more Bitcoin before it just goes crazy. So something to keep in mind. And again, so for me, once I feel we're at about the sort of, you know, the cycle peak, I am cashing out some of it. Not all of it, but I am going to definitely cash out some of it to make sure that I have funds for when it all comes down, I can invest into other things. You know, property is something I want to look at, uh, reinvest back into cryptocurrencies as well once I see another uh, cycle bottom and another accumulation phase and all the rest of it to try and continue that growth. But look, if Bitcoin came down to $10,000 or $1,000, uh, that would be, that would hurt for a lot of people. Uh, except for, you know, really early investors. I mean, you know, I can handle it coming down, uh, staying around $20,000 for a while. Uh, $10,000, I would still be in profit, but geez, not by much. I really would have, you know, not done a whole lot with my money uh, other than, you know, if I can get it making interest from somewhere else. But, uh, you know, below $1,000, that is unbelievable. That would uh, wreck pretty much anyone who ever got into Bitcoin other than uh, people who got in before sort of 2012, 2013, around the uh, kind of time that the Mount uh, Gox hack happened. All right, last but not least, let's go over to the charts. So as we saw, we had this downtrend, it's broken out, 
but we can see it's just you know we need to sort of get to around about here and it did wick up above there for a very short period to around about here but it's just fallen over and this seems to be the highs just get a little bit lower each time even though this pumped up it couldn't quite break those last couple of highs and this may roll over and this is what makes me think this is still a, a bit of a downward trend and look we can even go from here and sort of go to here still a downward trend uh, it doesn't mean it's going to roll over and come all the way back down here but I am sort of looking for Bitcoin to you know get down to around about here and look maybe even sort of sixteen fifteen thousand dollar level where it's been before so in and around here I'm not saying it will go down here but just at the moment you know decreasing volume uh, it's early in the week uh, I know the fear and greed X index so we'll go over uh, and have a look at that it's still super high still super high it's actually gotten higher it was down a little bit lower a while ago so back up to 91 it got down to like 85 or something it's been as high as 94 95 there there we go we can see that uh, and it was down around sort of 86 there you go so this is still really in the greed and at some stage uh, you know this is going to go to the other side when that's going to happen and how far it drops uh, is a complete different story like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin makes it up to around about 25,000 and then a 40% pullback from 25,000. I showed this the other day. So we get to 25,000. 40% pullback brings us back down to here. Now there's no guarantees that it's going to do that, but it is something that we just need to keep in mind. So again, if that were to happen, I don't want to be buying at here. Now look, it could go higher, it could go up to sort of $35,000 and then a 40% retracement really just brings us back down to around about sort of where we are. So, you know, it's hard to know. But for me, I'm just not buying at the moment. I'm waiting to see if it's going to come down lower. You know, how much lower is the next question? I'd really like it to see it to sort of come down back into the 17,000, 16,000. And look, re realistically, for a healthy market, maybe right down here to sort of 16,000, 15,000 ish dollars uh, would be a good retracement and that's where I'll really be uh, you know sinking the the majority of uh, you know my money if it does get down to that kind of yeah again in in here the 15 and a half thousand ish dollar level around about there it's going to marry up uh, with the I think the 50 day moving average is down around about there I know the 100 day moving average is now around about 14,000 uh, but the 200 day moving average that's actually down around 11,000 sort of $12,000 so yeah very interesting I mean let's have a look what a 40% retracement from where we are would be right, I'll have to move this chart sorry we'll let's try that again all right so from basically where we are now if we pull back 40% There we go. We are really. I'm pretty sure it brings us down to around about $11,000. So look, that is totally possible. Here we go. From there and 40%. There we go. $11,600 so if we were to have a correction which look is most of this parabolic move so that is completely uh, possible that that happens it just null and voids that for a while but if we were to do that I think the retracement would be pretty fast it wouldn't take us too long to get back up there and it's just something we need to keep in mind not saying it's going to happen, but I know the 200 day moving average is down around about 11,000, 11,800 thereabouts so a 40% retracement from here would actually take us down to the 200 day moving average and we haven't touched that for a while. So that's why I want to have money on the side. I don't think it'll make it, make it there and really at kind of the 15,000, let's say 500-ish dollar level, I would be throwing pretty much any spare cash I had at it and if it were to go lower, uh, then so be it. But this is really, I couldn't see it getting down to here anytime soon but it is something we need to keep in mind. All right, that's it from me. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think we could have a 40% retracement from here? 
Or do you think we could make it to around about that $25,000 mark and then have the 40% retracement and again come back down and test this sort of 14 ish thousand dollar level? Or do you think it's just up and up and that uh, this parabolic will just continue on for a lot longer before we see any kind of heavy retracements? All right, stay safe, be kind to one another, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Hopefully you're on that gain train and I'll see you next time.